Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revy Snippets! Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. We're getting very practical today and see how we can create this room schedule here, where you can have not only private elements listed by rooms, but also how many of those are there in each room. So for example here, I'm looking at the kitchen and dining room there. I can see that in terms of dining chair, it has 8 of those in the room. Once you have set it up, the system is entirely live and automated, so whenever you add or remove items in the model, this schedule will be updated as well. Alright, enough talking, let's get to work. Let me quickly close this view. We should now create a new one from scratch. Super easy now, just go to view, schedule, schedule and quantities. Here, because I'm trying to get all elements in each room, doesn't matter which category each one is, so I'm going to go for multi-category. Make sure you select the right phase for the elements. For example, all my components here are created on this phase working drawings. If they are on another phase in your case, you may want to select the right phase from here as well. Otherwise, the schedule will be empty. So with that set, we can now click OK. Next step is for us to select which parameters of those elements we want to see. For now, I'm going to keep it really simple and just get this family and type name. The thing is, sometimes the family name and type name in the same field can be confusing. So instead, I will add the family name and then the type name separately to replace this single field. We also need to get this count field. It's not really a Revit parameter you can edit. You will only see this in schedules. But with this, we can eventually know how many elements of a single type is there in each room. So I'm going to add this as well. Move it to the end. Next, we need to get the room properties that we want to show. So the trick here is to go up to there, this drop down, and choose room. If you are using in your model not rooms but spaces, you can choose space from here as well. For me, I'm using rooms, so let's get this one. And again, keeping things simple. I will just select room name and number for now and move them to the top of this list. Let's click OK and see how it goes. To visualize things easier, let me tile those views side by side. WT is a shortcut. Here we go. So, you can see it straight away, it's not as neat and tidy as the schedule I showed before. And also you have empty fields in the schedule as well. If the number and name of a room is empty on one line, that means the element on this line, for example this wind power generator, doesn't have any room containing it. It should be clear to see, but if I go to 3D now, we can see clearly that element there is outside of the model. And that's why it doesn't have any room containing it at the moment. A second reason why an element doesn't have a room is because it's in the room, but not entirely. For example, let me just turn on my properties window. Control 1 to do that. If I now select this bathtub there, I know for a fact that I have a second bathtub somewhere in the model. Let's quickly see it. If I go back to here, we can choose to short this schedule by family name. Scroll a bit down, I can see that's a second bathtub. When I highlight this item in the file, I can see it's on the balcony of this living room. If I want it to be part of this room here, I need to drag it so it's inside this room. At the moment it's half and half, half inside, half outside. Not good enough, you need to go further in. And now it's inside, but it's still not showing the room name and number because of another reason. If I now make a section through this room here, it will be clear. So, open the section now. And choose to show my room color. Turn it on from interior view. And you can see, that's the bathtub there, hosted on this floor of this room. But the blue room object, this one I can select now, is actually based on the level above. The room is on level 1 living room. But the actual room object is on level 1, a few hundred millimeters above. For this room to properly detect objects that it contains, I need to ensure its extent is correct. In this case, we simply can just drag its bottom face down 
to where the level 1 living room level is. You can either drag it like I did, or if you know the value of this base offset, just put it in here. It should be 550. And there we go. Immediately now we see this bathtub has detected its room, living room number 1 of 6. That's the same room we have selected, living room 1 of 6. So far so good, but it doesn't really make sense to have a bathtub in the middle of the living room, does it? What if I want it to be still on the terrace? But because I know people who will be using it will be coming from this living room, and I don't want to, for some reason, make a separate room for this balcony area, I can still register this object to this room using a simple trick. Just select it now and go to Edit Family. In here, under Properties, you can enable Room Calculation Point. By default, it will be where the placement of the family is. So if I go now to the reference level of this family, I know that this family is placed from this point here. That's why the calculation point is there by default. But there's nothing stopping me from selecting this point and just drag it where I want it to be. And then I can try and load it back into my project. Now, when I select this bathtub, you can see that point there is now inside the room because I relocated it in the family. And in the schedule, the bathtub is now registered to the right room as well, just like before, without it having to be actually inside this room there. So that's how you can fix families that you can place using a single point. It's a different story though for doors and windows. To demonstrate it, let me just add another field to this schedule. For the room, I will also now want to get their level and place that at the top of this list. Level 1 is there for some rooms, the rest will be on level 2. Now let's pick a window to look at. I can try this single window here on level 1. Let's see which one we can see quickly in the view. Here we go, you can see it's highlighted now in red. That's the same window on this schedule line. Just like with the bathtub, it doesn't know which room it's in. And the reason is this, for windows and doors. Revit knows that usually they are not in a single room, they usually go between rooms. So instead of one single room object, they actually register themselves to two. A from room, where they open from, and a to room, where they open to. You can see this easily in the family. So when I have this one selected, I can go and edit this family. In here, you will have room calculation points either enabled already, that's why I can see them here, or if they are not enabled, you can just tick this box here under the family properties to bring them back on. So without room calculation points and with room calculation points. Now when I go to this family's floor plan, I have not one but two room calculation points. This one here is a from point and the one on the opposite side, that's the two point. We will see later on how to make use of these points to report rooms for doors and windows. But for now, just know that because they are different in principle, you won't see their rooms in this same schedule with the other object types. Okay, so back to this later. We can now return for now to this project level 1. Let's tidy it up to make it look like the one I showed in the beginning. So let's go to Fields. Under Sorting and Grouping, we want to group them first by level, and then room name, and then family name. Okay. Much better now. Next step is to insert some blank lines so we can make out the data easier from this table. I want to have blank lines after levels and after each room name. Here we go. Let's make this a bit wider so we can see the entire content. You can see now, in this room, for example, there are different chairs, but I want to have only one single line per chair type. To do so, we can go to Filter, Shorting and grouping, and untick itemize every instance. That allows us to collapse all lines showing the same family to a single entry. So before I had eight lines for this same chair type, right now I only have one, and the count value has updated itself to show the number eight. That's the number of chair of this type in this room, on this level. If you want to, you can also calculate the total number of items per room. Just go to sorting and grouping again. Under the room name, 
Under footer, just choose title count and totals. Click OK now, and now I can see. In this bathroom, I have three objects. In the kitchen and dining room, I have 48 objects, and so on. We can apply some color fields as well to make sure we can make out each column individually quicker. So let's say I want room fields to be blue. That's done it. And I can also make the count column stand out a bit more, maybe using this color. So that's how you do it for point-based elements. How about windows and doors? As promised, let's tackle them now. For those elements, you need to add an additional schedule. Let's go to View, Schedule, Quantities. And because I don't want to do all the categories in the file here, I can just choose Windows to start with. Just like before, I would get in here the family name and the type name. And now we can add room information. As opposed to with other family types, you can see now, instead of one single line for room, you have now two lines, one for from room and the other one for to room. Let's see what we have under from room. So it's the same parameter list that we saw before, but this time not to room, they are now applying to from room. I can now get their name and number, add to the list, and then do the same for to room. Name and number again. This time we can sort this list by family name and do OK. As you can see, these windows now have rooms on one side of them. For example, this window here is opens from the living room into the outer space. There's no room on the outer space of the building, so this is blank and blank. Nothing there to worry about. That's a typical setup for windows. Usually you only have either the from room or the to room. How about doors? If I go and make a door schedule now, we can see what happens there. So again, right category and right face to be selected. Let's get the family name and type name again. And just like with Windows, you have from room and to room. I will get the from room name and number, followed by the to room name and number. OK. And now it's a much more complete schedule. For example, if I pick on this door there and see it in the view. Here we go. Had to go a few times there to get to a level. But you can see there, it's opening from the entry hall into the bedroom. For some reason though, in the schedule, it's showing that the door is opening from the bedroom to the entry hall. This may be correct, but if it's not, you need to go and modify the from room and to room points in the door family. Let's try that quickly. Select the door now. Go to edit family. And now as you can see, just like I mentioned earlier before, some doors in window just don't have from room and to room points enabled. Let's turn them on now for this family. Click on this to do so. And the first thing I'll do is to check out the floor plan. You can see now, it's now properly done, because now I have the from room on this side. And on the other side, where I have the swing annotation, the two room point is there. My guess is, if I now load this door back into the project, this problem will sort itself out. Let's see if it does. So, load into the project. Override existing version. And certainly enough, now it's properly reported as opening from the entry hall to the bedroom. If that was still wrong, you would need to edit the door family to maybe bring the swing annotation to the other side or flip the calculation points. Let's try the second one. If I now go back to the family now, click on this. There's a small icon there where I can flip the side of each room calculation point. Click it once. And now you can see this from room point is now on this side where I have my swing annotation. And the two room is now on the other side. If I now load this back into the project, these two rooms will swap names and numbers. And I did. You see that? It's all under your control. Anyway, just like with the other schedule, I can now tidy this up a little to make it more formal and neat. Let's go to Edit Fields. I want to now sort this by From Room. So I'll bring those four fields up. 
and the sort again grouping sort this by from room name and then by to room name and then by family name on the from room i want to have a blank lines every time the from room changes so click on this one here and do ok and now as you can see we know for sure now that from the entry hall there are three doors opening into different rooms this one is opening to the outside of the building so there's no number and name there that's correct but these two they are opening into the linen room however you may want to watch out for from rooms that have the same name in this case i have here three different bathrooms with the same name but different numbers so in fact i should have sorted this by from room number not name and same for two room and there we go now we have this bathroom there on this single line this one on another line and this one on a different line just like it should be all right so i hope that was useful if you like tutorials like this coming every single day make sure to subscribe to this channel for now practice this new skill and i'll see you in the next lesson